final push of the regular season. Four games in nine days. Uh, it will be tough. It'll mix travel with home games. And uh, we've got an opportunity to stay in the conference race as much as it seems like uh, being two games out with four to go is uh, not attainable to win a conference title. It still is. Uh, there are, every game in this conference is really hard. And the teams at the top have hard games left. So we have to take care of our business. We have to win at home tomorrow against San Jose. Uh, and try to stay in this race as we approach the final nine days of the regular season. Thanks, Coach. Looking around for the first question. Go ahead, Lee. Hey, Brian Lee. Um, Wyoming's Maldonado, how dynamic and diverse is he? And secondly, their big man, what kind of problems does he cause? Because you also got to defend Maldonado at the same time. Yeah, EK and Maldonado have had great seasons. Uh, they both can back you down in the low post and score one-on-one. -on -one. And if you double, they surround him with great shooters. So Wyoming's done a great job all year uh, uh, playing to those two uh, and then uh, spraying it out for open three. So Coach Linder's done a really good job. It will be a tall task in Laramie uh, on Monday to battle the Cowboys. And the follow-up, the thin air and the altitude and that arena and the craziness, is Laramie maybe as tough a geographical place to play in the, in the conference? Lee, it's the only place we charter every year because it's so hard to get to. You know, to fly to Denver and then bus over the mountain pass, you never know what weather you're going to get if you can even get in there. And so we're going to charter in there and then charter back to give ourselves the best opportunity not only to win that game, but then the follow-up game uh, coming back for Fresno. So traveling the Mountain West is not easy. It's tough. And uh, a lot of the teams charter every game. We don't charter every game. We charter maybe four legs a season. And we try to choose the best ones to get us back in town where we can sleep in our own bed in order to try to come back and win a game on a short turnaround. And is light air the toughest in Laramie to deal with compared to Air Force, Colorado State, or Utah State? I think New Mexico and, and uh, Wyoming provide the highest altitude games, both over 7,000 feet. And then the fan bases are enthusiastic. I We've been in Albuquerque enough to know you can't hardly hear yourself in that building in your own timeout. And then uh, it's not so many years ago, I remember being in this league where Wyoming was winning the league title and filling that building. And I'd be surprised if we don't play in a full uh, uh, arena auditorium on uh, Monday against Wyoming as they compete for a conference title. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Lee. We'll go to Mark. Coach, you know, technically you're in fourth place in the league, um, but you also have the best metrics of anybody in the league. How closely do you follow those metrics and, and, and how important do you think those are in NCAA tournament selection? I'll, I'll look at them occasionally. They make me too nervous. You know, I get me looking too far ahead. So I know if we win games, we'll have a chance to make the tournament. And if we don't win games, we won't. So we have to just win games. And then the metrics will take care of themselves. Uh, if we don't uh, uh, get a piece of this conference title, then we got to find a way to win three or four games in Las Vegas next week and, and, and get in automatically. So obviously as a coach... Uh, you know, I pay attention to them, but I can't control them. All I can control as a head coach is the quality of the play of our own team. So I try to focus on that more than the metrics, Mark. One of the, one of the tricky parts of the metrics is it's not necessarily that you win, it's how you win. And, and in a game like San Jose State, um, a two-point win would crush you probably in those metrics. Um, but a 20-point win or 25-point win would not. Are you aware of that? Yeah, I know point spreads matter. I've never been a guy. Uh, I just am grateful to win any game. I'm not a guy that tries to run up the score on anybody. And uh, we were fortunate to win at San Jose. I think it was a six-point game in the second half, and I was just happy to get a win. And I think it ended up 10 points. So uh, our goal is to win the game. Uh, what the final score looks like, as long as the Aztecs are on top, that's all I really care about. And then uh, one thing about Wyoming, uh, since Jeff Linder has come in the league, he's been very, very complimentary of your program. 
Um, he's spoken about it as, as, as something that he hopes to emulate, maybe not necessarily in playing style, but in terms of culture, um, uh, attention to detail, work ethic, those types of things. When you hear a coach say that, um, is that sort of the ultimate compliment? Yeah, Mark. I mean, we've hu we've hung 14 conference titles, which is leads the league by six. And so the culture that Steve Fisher brought to San Diego State all those years ago, uh, the work we've put in to maintain it, uh, it opens eyes around the conference. And so uh, there are teams either trying to be like San Diego State or find ways to beat San Diego State. And that's a great compliment to Coach Fisher and the job he did building this program. Does it scare you a little bit when coaches sort of figure that out? I mean, Boise State has been very, Leon Rice has been very vocal a few years ago about how he needed to change how he put together a team to make it look more like your team. And, and he has a team that looks very much like a San Diego State team. And now Jeff Linder's saying that those types of things, does that scare you a little bit as a coach that, that, that you know, that they'll get good quickly? Well, we can't let people uh, out San Diego State, San Diego State. So it's a great challenge, and we love the challenge. Uh, we continue to build this program. We're not where we want to be right now. We want to be in first place in this conference. We want to make deep runs in the NCAA tournament. And that's always been our goal and will continue to be our goal. So we build it every year to try to be the best version of ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. We'll go to John. Josh, kind of to that point, you've spoken before, though, about how it's important for San Diego State to have a good league. Right. I mean, the, you benefit from the fact that you got teams that are, you know, top 50 caliber teams across the country. Do you feel like even with your standing in the league with these close losses to some good teams, it's put you in a better position because the league has been stronger overall? Absolutely. I mean, to go lose at Boise by a point and actually gain ground in the metrics yeah. speaks to the quality of this league. Now, we know that. The question is, will the selection committee know that? At the end of the day, I've said it for the last four or five years that the Power Fives are getting more teams than the non-Power Five conferences. And so the Mountain West has done a good job. The WCC, a lot of these conferences around the, comp the country have done good jobs building their leagues. And now we got to see if we're all rewarded when it comes to Selection Sunday. Can you explain, I know you've talked about this before, and you've avoided back-to-back -back elevation games in recent years, I, I believe. And that's to your advantage. I believe you said previously, what is it about elevation that creates problems the longer that you're at it or in it? Well, there have been studies done that uh, if you can play between 24 and 36 hours uh, after arriving, uh, the, the altitude has less an effect. It has an effect and affects everybody differently. But to acclimate to altitude, you have to almost be there two weeks. So we're not going anywhere for two weeks. So... Uh, we want to play as quickly as we can at altitude, and we don't want to stay and have that second game. We we had travel partners, and that's what it was. We used to go uh, Air Force, New Mexico, Colorado State, Wyoming, BYU, Utah, and the second game at altitude always seemed to have a greater effect than the first game. And then lastly, Dutch, just the, you know, you've had this a couple times. We've talked about this before. What's the mindset of a team when you lose a game in the fashion that you lost Tuesday night? It's not the only game you lost like that this year. And, and Moby, you had a difficult loss, the home game against Boise. How, how do you pick teams back up after tough losses? You just have to have a short memory, John. You know, even if we win that game, we're preaching that uh, celebrate it tonight, but tomorrow we go back to work. And when you lose it, you say, uh, uh, feel bad tonight, but don't feel bad tomorrow. We have work to do. We have quick turnarounds. And that's an NBA mentality. When we're playing – four games in nine days. We don't have time to worry about any win or loss. We have to solely focus on the next game at hand, and that this team has done a great job of doing that all season. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, John. We'll go to Austin. Hey, Coach. Uh, looking at the box score of last game, you guys shot 46% from the field. You only lost the rebound battle by one, and you held a really good Boise team down to 34% shooting from the field. Now that you've had two days off and looked, in, looked at the tape, what do you see that this team can still do better going forward? Well, we, we lost the game in large part because they got to the foul line more than we did. But they've done that all year. That's a big winning stat. They've made more free throws in the conference than their opponents have taken. And that's winning basketball any way you look at it. And we let them beat us at the foul line. So we have to do a good job defending against good teams at a high level and not put them to the line. And, and that's a lesson moving forward that uh, we have to defend without fouling. And then 
State now has lost four games this season where it's been a one possession game with a minute or less remaining in the game. Obviously, there's been calls and plays that haven't necessarily gone their way. But I'm wondering, what are you taking from these close games at the wire, especially going into March where bigger games are ahead? That this team has great grit and determination. That uh, these are not games where we've had 20, 30-point leads and, and lost those leads. We've come from 20 down. We've come from 10 down to fight our way back into these games and give ourselves an opportunity to win. So this team plays hard for 40 minutes. And if you're going to beat the Aztecs, you're going to have to compete for 40 minutes to do it. Final one for me. Uh, I know Matt must be still pretty upset over himself over the ending of that game. I'm just wondering, have you seen him grinding out any free throws in these last two days since that game? Well, we had to take yesterday off because uh, we needed a one-day off NCAA rule week-wise. So we didn't go on the floor yesterday. And uh, if Matt's madder about him, Matt uh, is mad about missing him more than I am, then he'll make a lot more. So we were both mad, and if he's madder, we'll be in good shape. That's great. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Austin. I'm looking around for any more questions for Coach Dutcher. I'd just like to say one last thing that uh, the fan support at Viejas has been incredible this year with the uh, – uh, restrictions that have needed to be followed to be in the building, vaccinated, boosted, or tested negative, that I'm so grateful to the fan support we've had, that they've come out here, they've made a difference in these games, and that we need you out there for San Jose and Fresno, our last two home games of the season, that you make a difference and we want you in the building, we need you in the building for us to be at our best.